Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. In this video, we will go through the various options that you may consider for Down syndrome screening during pregnancy. The screening test can tell you the likelihood of Down syndrome and this may help you and your family plan, prepare and discuss options for your pregnancy. There are two types of Down syndrome screening tests that you may consider. The first trimester screening, also known as FTS, and non-invasive prenatal testing, also known as NIPT. These tests are optional, so please take some time to consider whether you would like to have these tests done. For example, some pregnant women may decide to only pursue FTS, while others may choose not to have any testing done at all. Down syndrome is the most common chromosomal abnormality and affects about 1 in 500 births. It typically happens by chance and usually does not run in families. Down syndrome is also not caused by anything a woman does or does not do before or during pregnancy. Individuals with Down syndrome have intellectual disability as well as birth defects such as heart defects and other health problems. Down syndrome is a chromosomal abnormality that all pregnancies are at risk for. Most of us have 23 pairs of chromosomes. Individuals with Down syndrome, however, have an extra third copy of chromosome 21, also known as trisomy 21. The likelihood of having a baby with Down syndrome increases with a woman's age. The older the woman, the higher the chance. However, all pregnancies have a possibility of Down syndrome, so young women too can have a pregnancy that is affected. Besides Down syndrome, trisomy 18, where there is an extra third copy of chromosome 18, and trisomy 13, where there is an extra copy of chromosome 13, may also occur in pregnancy. Babies with trisomy 18, known as Edwards syndrome, and trisomy 13, known as Patau syndrome, have severe intellectual disability and birth defects. Screening tests such as FTS and NIPT give you information about the likelihood of Down syndrome, trisomy 18 and trisomy 13. However, they do not give you a definitive answer. A screen positive result does not mean that the pregnancy is definitely affected. The most accurate ways to test for Down syndrome in the pregnancy are through amniocentesis or CVS. Under the guidance of an ultrasound, the doctor will carefully insert a needle into the womb to extract some amniotic fluid or placental tissue. These procedures allow for the detection of Down syndrome as well as other chromosomal abnormalities. However, they are invasive and have a risk of miscarriage associated with it which is why screening options such as FTS and NIPT can be considered first. FTS and NIPT are not invasive and do not have an associated risk of miscarriage. The FTS is a screening test for Down syndrome, trisomy 18, trisomy 13, as well as structural defects in the baby. It combines the pregnant woman's age-related risk with the results of an ultrasound. The ultrasound looks for the presence of the nasal bone and measures a pocket of fluid at the back of the baby's neck called the nucotranslucency. The FTS also combines a blood test that measures levels of hormones in the pregnant woman's blood to provide risk estimations for Down syndrome, trisomy 18 and trisomy 13 in the pregnancy. The FTS ultrasound scan also allows us to check for obvious structural defects in the baby such as whether there is an absent skull, an opening in the abdomen, or some obvious heart defects that may also indicate increased risk for other chromosome or genetic conditions in the baby. The detection rate for Down syndrome through FTS is 90%. This means that 9 out of 10 pregnancies affected by Down syndrome can be detected through the test. However, 1 in 10 pregnancies affected by Down syndrome will not be detected, and will be reported as low risk. The chance of being called high risk or screen positive through FTS is 5%. This means that 1 in 20 women who have had FTS done will be found to be high risk. The FTS result will be presented in a risk ratio format and uses 1 in 300 as a cutoff for high risk. If a risk is found to be higher than 1 in 300, 
for example, 1 in 50 or 1 in 100, the pregnant woman will be considered as high risk and further testing will be offered through amniocentesis or CVS or NIPT. NIPT is also a non-invasive screening test for Down syndrome. Blood is drawn from the pregnant woman's arm to look for DNA from the placenta. NIPT screens for Down syndrome with more than 99% sensitivity, trisomy 18 with a 97% sensitivity, and trisomy 13 with a 94% sensitivity. Also included in NIPT is the option to screen for the gender of the baby, and the option to assess the risk for sex chromosome abnormalities. Males are usually XY and females are usually XX. NIPT can detect if the pregnancy may be at increased likelihood of any extra or missing chromosomes X or Y. Individuals with sex chromosome abnormalities have normal facial features, but have a higher chance of developmental delay, behavioural issues and infertility. The severity of these conditions varies widely, and sensitivity for them through NIPT is lower. The chance of false positives is higher as well. For these reasons, testing for sex chromosome abnormalities through NIPT is optional. Also included in NIPT is the option to screen for another condition known as 22Q11 deletion syndrome. This happens when there is a small deletion in chromosome 22. Individuals with 22Q11 deletion syndrome have a high chance of intellectual disability, structural defects and other health issues. The sensitivity for 22Q11 deletion syndrome through NIPT is 75%. This is a sample of what an NIPT low-risk result looks like. The risks for trisomy 21, 18 and 13 are low. The risks for sex chromosome problems and 22Q11 deletion syndrome are lowered as well. And the gender is also stated in the report. This is an example of what an NIPT high-risk report looks like. The pregnancy is found to be at high risk for Down syndrome. However, although the result is found to be high risk, NIPT is still a screening test and further counselling and testing, such as amniocentesis, will be offered. Some samples of NIPT, however, are unable to produce a result. This happens to 1-2% to of samples and can be due to many reasons, including insufficient DNA that comes from the placenta. If this happens, the patient may be called back for a redraw at no charge. However, not all redraws are successful. In summary, FTS is a combination of blood tests and ultrasound scan and can only be performed before 13 weeks and 6 days of pregnancy. Besides Down syndrome, trisomy 18 and trisomy 13, FTS also screens for structural defects in the baby. NIPT, on the other hand, is a blood test that can be drawn any time after 10 weeks of pregnancy and does not involve an ultrasound scan and so is unable to screen for structural defects in the baby. NIPT, however, has a higher sensitivity for Down syndrome trisomy 18 and trisomy 13, and also screens for gender, sex chromosomal abnormalities, and 22Q11 deletion syndrome. NIPT results take approximately two weeks, and FTS results take approximately one week. We hope this video has helped you understand your options for Down syndrome screening. Please note that testing is optional, and every patient's decision about what tests they want can be different. Please feel free to call us at 6394-1288 if you have any questions.